association with Eddie Gary Car Sales, Subaru main dealer, Waterford. We're high up in the hills of Carrick and Shear, Tipperary, for the first round of the Macaulay Trailers National Forestry Rally Championship. Now, this is a very important round for many of the drivers who will be aiming to secure maximum points in order to give them a good start to the championship. Current champions Eddie Kinarns and Greg Shinners have no plans to come back and defend their title this year as they have made the transition to the Tarmac Championship to try their luck there. The crew, who are unstoppable in their first three rounds with three wins in their Subaru, Corkman John McCarthy and Dan McGuire navigating, are in with a bid for the title this year with an ex-Austin McHale Corolla. It's a lovely car to drive on gravel. The left and drive is my biggest concern. I've never driven left and drive before. Uh, fortunately, a fellow competitor offered a loan of a car, so I've driven a left and drive road car for about 1,500 miles and that's just making me familiar with my position on the road, etc. Kevin O'Kane's consistency throughout last year almost brought him championship honours. With the newer car this year, will he and Martin Hanna bring the crown back to Northern Ireland? Yes, I'm looking forward to getting out in this car and the championship with all the rallies. And competition's getting more intense, all right, but that's the way life is these days. You have to try and stay with it. Surprise package in last year's events with no experience of Irish forestry, Kevin Lynch was an unknown capacity. And after mixing it with the big boys in the winner's circle, he soon became a force to be reckoned with. Definitely John McCarthy will be on the pace, uh, changing to the new Corolla, uh, and Kevin again up on as well, to uh, uh, Subaru uh, WRC. So uh, it'll be difficult, but we'll, we'll be there, thereabouts. Ryan, we're used to seeing you in the navigator seat of Austin McHale's car today. You're going to give the driving a go. Yeah, well, you know, it's a couple of years since I've been in the wood, and uh, I always enjoyed a bit of forestry rallying, and, and just with, with navigating for Austin last year, the last two years in the British and the Irish Championship, I just hadn't time, so it was an opportunity just today to come out, and that's why I'm here, so I'm going to have a really good go today. The famous Anner stage has traditionally been the opener of the championship, and with many of the drivers a little rusty, it is always to be treated with extreme caution. The short but tricky stage has many fast junctions, which is sure to catch out those unaware. Last year's winner and first off the ramp, John McCarthy with regular navigator Dan McGuire are adjusting to their new car, but they unfortunately will not complete the first stage when they clip a rock and break a wishbone. Kevin O'Kane has seemed to adapt to his new car with great style and is fourth fastest by a mere 10 seconds. But it's Kevin Lynch who everybody will be watching and he is second fastest on the opening stage. Tarmac navigator Brian Murphy proves he's no slouch when he's in the driving seat and he's a full eight seconds faster than everyone else. Making his way from the scene of the mishap, John McCarthy tells us just what went wrong. Uh, we just clipped the rock on the inside and broke a wheel. There's no body damage right to the car, but the wheel is jammed in under it, so we tried to drive it out, but not a chance. That's it for today. As James Murphy and Carl Mulcahy pass the stricken Corolla of McCarthy, they are about to run into turbo troubles of their own. Junction 150. Right over St. Moral Crest. Repeat right over Crest. Jump 200. Crest and jump 300. That's it, sir. That's it, sir. And yeah. Moral Crest jump. That's it, sir. Jump 200. The right over finish. Repeat right over finish. A driver never to be underestimated when luck is on his side is Dermot Kelly, but is in 13 supposed to be an unlucky number. Five right, 80, small jump, 80 downhill, five left. Five left and 40 long four right. Five left here, 40 long four in and 60 hairpin left. Slippy, 60 hairpin left here, slippy. Hairpin, 80, hairpin, hairpin, hairpin. 
Paul Barrett and Dermot Colgan are flying in their Lancers, setting very respectable times en route to fourth position. Group N champions John Shanahan and Lee McLaughlin will struggle to repeat last year's success when they blow the engine of the showroom category Subaru on the second stage. Bump into left four, don't cut. Bump into left four, don't cut 100. And hip and left. Repeat hip and left. The Lancer of Patrick Elliott is flying but is cautious as it's his first time on gravel in a long time. 80. Smartest and bumps 100. One right over pumps, don't cut. 80. Four right. Four right. 40. Stephen Moore and Stephen Griffiths really set the pace and lead the group end right up to the third stage when they retire. First of the two-wheel drive brigade, Dubliners John Reed and Brandon Green are currently ninth overall. Pat Norris and Declan Timothy show just how committed they are with the second fastest time in the opening stage. And with driving like this, it's not surprising. The cool, calculated approach of Ray Benskin and Pander Walsh show the experienced way through this tricky chicane and are second in class. Entertainers of the forest events and enjoying themselves are Paul Mulcahy and Carl Bowman in their starlet twin cam. Following his cousin in similar style is Alan Mulcahy, more usually seen in a starlet. Today he's hired an escort for this event. An event sponsor, James Coleman and Owen O'Neill navigating, had a spin and a hairpin on the outer stage, but recovered to get some fastest times. Aaron McHale and Jared McGonagall have followed suit of Brian Murphy with the transition from tarmac to loose surface and are finding the car a bit of a handful, but the Lancer eventually grinds to a halt on stage four. Eddie Gary pushes hard, but has been pushed even harder by navigator Kevin Kelleher. 170 now into one left past the logs, 80 after it into crest and four right rough. Come on. Flat all the way, Eddie. That is, come on. Flat all the way. Four right, 80 after it into one right. Lloyd and Lester Hutchinson are always danger man in a rapid mini and continue to shame a lot of the more powerful machinery. Last year's two-liter class champions, Brian Lawler and Peter Cabinet, have upgraded to a more powerful 16-valve plant and attacked the learning curve with caution. Ball quest, 60, caution, big jump at junction. Followed by 150, followed by 150. Right quest, jump, 200. Jump, 300. Ahead. James Gribbon and Bob Kelly in the highly competitive Class 8, but a few minutes off the class leaders after getting a puncture on stage 3. Repeat one right, bumps 100, come on up the box, into one right 60 over bump, into centre over small bump 60, into two left, into small press 40, into three right opens, repeat small press 40, three right opens. Tashel's Trevor Harding and Charlie Boland impress in the Puget 106, but push a little too hard at this hairpin and struggle for traction in the gravel. Another tarmac regular having a go in the woods is Pat Price, which Dermot Falvey on the notes. They too were adapting well to the gravel stages. Bob Scallon and Peter Kyohan are no strangers to the forest year events and set a cracking pace in their Mount Tune engined Lancer. Patrick Keenan made the long trip from America to compete in a car that I had just taken delivery on and that had no mileage on the clock prior to this event. The Titans. Titans. Easy. 170. Ginger. Crest. Left to deceptive. Ginger. Crest. Left to deceptive. Kevin, it seems to be yourself and Brian Murphy setting the pace out there this morning. I will, we're on a reasonable pace, but... Uh, uh, Oh, it's just bedding ourselves in. Kevin O'Kane's not far away. James Murphy's not far away. You know what I mean? It's all, we're all there, thereabouts, and everybody thinks on a steady pace. Brian, you are the pace setter here this morning. Were you expecting that at all? No, I just went out to enjoy myself. I only drove the car twice in Mandela Park before, and uh, I enjoyed it, and it's a nice car, easy to drive, so I don't know, maybe I'm, something must be happening right. 
after holding on to their place all morning, are you happy with your morning's work? Yeah, it's the first time out in the car and, and it's great to, to finally have a decent car because uh, all these years I've been driving the Yorks, they were fairly good but not brilliant. So I, I'm delighted with where we are at the minute. The Kilcash stage is run twice in this event. It starts near the village of Kilcash, but has little or no access for spectators. A favourite with many of the drivers for its good surface and high-speed junctions. Kevin O'Kane is first on the road after the halfway mark, but is quickly pursued by Kevin Lynch, who by now has the bit between his teeth. Brian Murphy cannot be discounted, as he is the sensation of the rally, with a comfortable lead and with some very spectacular driving. Paul Barris takes an interesting line and almost drops his Lancer into a drain, but holds a solid fifth overall. Patrick Elliott is yet another sealed surface driver, having a go to see what the forestry experience is all about. Right four, right eighty. Two left into two right, and one left into one right. One hundred. Five left. Five left into four right. Forty. Unfortunately, we shall no longer see the beautiful Subaru of Stephen Moore and Stephen Griffith, who retires shortly after this section. Pat Norris pushes on toward a very respectable stage time and shows no sign of backing off on the leaders. drive star and astonished Paul Mulcahy drives his car around this bend as if it was on rails. Upholding family honours is cousin Alan, another rear wheel drive entertainer. And so the leaders after stage six, Paul Barrett is in fifth, Kevin O'Kane is in fourth, Pat Norris is in third, Kevin Lynch is in second and Brian Murphy is in first. In association with Eddie Gary Car Sales, Subaru Main Dealer, Waterford. In association with Eddie Gary Car Sales, Subaru Main Dealer, Waterford. Brian, you've now gained a lead of 12 seconds. Yeah, well, we had 12 seconds on the first after the first three stages, and it's ac exactly the same again. It's another 12 seconds now. So, uh, Kevin, on the first stage after service, we were equal time, and then four. I took four of Kevin on the last, and then he took four back of me in the last one. So it's nip and tuck all day. So there's four stages left, but it's anyone's rally. Kevin, you're looking very relaxed there. Did you have a good morning? Oh, so far so good. Uh, we've got a problem now. We just don't know where we're, where we're going to go on or not because the center or the rear depths got really noisy and I can't hear the man calling the notes. The man is keeping us on the road, he can't hear the notes, so it's 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 a risk at the minute. I don't know where we'll go on or not. We're just talking it over here with Stan. Pat, you're having a brilliant battle out there with Brian Murphy. Yeah, I, I didn't expect to be running so close to Brian or Kevin Lynch, but uh, it's working out quite well for us, so we're having a good battle today and hopefully it'll keep going. The cars are identical, there's about 12 seconds between you. Do you think you'll be able to close the gap? Uh, I will try, but Brian's driving very fast. He's, he's a wealth of experience on, on me, so he has. So I'll just tip along and see how we get on. Gertine is a stage that was used last year, but this year it's run in reverse. It is also shortened, so driving on memory won't be much of an advantage for many of the drivers. Cool spring conditions, Kevin O'Kane blasts his blue Subaru to keep on the pace, and the battle hots up for the loop. Kevin Lynch shows no signs of relaxing, as his differential worries are now behind him, and he has a lot of work to do. Brian Murphy is fighting for the lead, and he's having a great battle all day with the Subaru of Kevin Lynch. Pat 
Luke Norris and Declan Tumulty are in a comfortable third place overall, but are keeping the pressure on Brian Murphy. While Paul Barrett and Dermot Colgan secure fourth position. Patrick Elliott speeds up with every stage mile and improves all the time. Three left. 60. Two right. Two left. 40. Six left. Five right. Six left, five right. Paul, the rally seems to be going pretty well for you. Yeah, things are fairly smooth now at the moment with a good run through the first three and second three now. We're kind of eager. We took a bit of time out of ourselves, so we're well, kind of comfortable enough now. The man that was second just broke his axle, so we have a good cushion now for second and third. Eddie Gary makes a mess of this junction and nearly takes Austin McHale with him. You're okay, Ed. Go on, keep going right. And McHale. Two right. Two junction, 150 into one right over Christ. Into 60 and dip. And one right again. John Reed leads his class by 10 seconds and can't afford to relax with just a few stage miles to go. Brian Lawler continues to lead despite being in considerable pain when another competitor drove over his foot while he checked underneath the car for damage at a time control. Made this event. Yeah, absolutely. Um, only two weeks ago, we were had no motor for the car. We have a new one being built at the minute. Um, something fairly special by Tom Casey. It won't be ready until next week. But um, thanks to Liam Wall, we got a loan of his um, two-liter Astra for the event and sent it to Wales last week to Garrett Lyde and arrived in um, there on yesterday morning. And we did a little bit of testing, and it's going great, great. I'm delighted with it, and great to be out, of course, in the local event. James Cribbett and Bob Kelly having a great run and with no problems to report are just a few places outside the top 10. To five left past the nearby, 150, opens 150. One right, 170, long one right, 80. Repeat long one right, stay mid, 80. Pat Price enjoyed his drive on the gravel and is considering a return to the loose after some encouraging stage times. Bob Scanlon and Peter Cohan take third in Class 8 and were delighted with their performance. The brand new Lancer of Patrick Keenan needs some adjusting for the Irish gravel to make it more competitive and with more stage mileage will improve on performance. At 100, left 2, into right 3, left 2 into right 3, and 40, left 3 long, right three. left 3 long. Like last year, you would have embarrassed a lot of the top spec cars with the stage times that you put in. What is this Mini made of? Well, the Mini, as you see, it, is, it still is a standard Mini. It uses rubber suspension, standard type shock absorbers, but all of the little things have been improved. All the things that used to break and, and stop working and all of that. Uh, it's just all the little bits added together to make the reliability and coming off every stage without making any mistakes. That's what gets the times and gets the times he does by finishing over five minutes ahead of his nearest rival. Michael Tynan and Colin Brady are on their way to fifth in class and press on to the finish. Andrew Mackerel and Richard Cassidy are second in class and tenth overall, but not bad for a navigation champion. Michael Nevin and John Kinahan are on the way to a class win with a minute and a half to spare in their 1600 escorts. At high speed with fists full of opposite lock is Limerick driver Mikey O'Connor, who with Dennis Collins had an incredible drive to finish just outside the top 10. Trevor tries, but unfortunately will throw away a good result up on a ditch on the final loop. Kevin Power and Donna O'Sullivan take fourth in class on their local events. 
Michael Moore has a time-consuming spin, but doesn't make it to the finish of the event, but enjoyed it nevertheless. <laughs> Autocross expert Jimmy Devan finished in the top 20 and gathered some very valuable class points. The classic Mark I escort of Derek Brennan and Robbie Webster set some great stage times and finished second in class after a long battle with the leader. Keeping it in the family was John Brennan and Stephen Broders, who finished a credible first in class. Joseph Shinners and Mark Bones finished second in class and bagged some valuable points in the opening round of the championship. Jim Fagan and Tom Snell take second in class after battling all day with class winner Mick Nevin. Peter McCullough and Alan Dolan finished first in class seven in their Peugeot Cup car. Second in class seven went to Clonmel crew, Andrew Kearney and Owen O'Neill in a similar car. Eighth overall goes to Patrick Elliott in his hired Mitsubishi Lancer. 12 seconds ahead, the more experienced Bob Scanlon claimed seventh place. Taking a brilliant sixth position, Paul Mulcahy in his 1600 two-wheel drive Starlet. His finest result to date gives Brian Lawler some confidence with more power in his escort to claim fifth place. Paul Barris took an astonishing fourth overall in his Lancer. And so to the top three, Pat Norris shows he has not lost any of his flair as he's back in business with third overall. A very worthy runner-up who had victory stolen from him on the last stage, Brian Murphy, is a driver many would hope to see back in the woods more often. But there can only be one winner, and after a storming drive on the last stage, to take a 10-second win, Kevin Lynch opens his account with a maximum score on the first round. Of the uh, Carrick Hotel, the... Uh... He just stopped right here. <laughs> well done, Kevin. Brian Murphy certainly was uh, setting the pace all day, but uh, we sort of got to grips with it on the last uh, four stages and uh, pulled back uh, quite a bit of time and uh, just kept pushing to the end and we got the result in the last stage. And the final results of the Willie Lockman Forestry Rally look like this. Kevin Lynch clinching the win by five seconds over Brian Murphy in second, Pat Norris in third, Paul Barrett in fourth, and Brian Lawler in fifth. Well, at the end of the day, it was a mere five seconds separating first and second place with Kevin Lynch taking his first victory downside. Indeed, Kevin did prove his skills towards the end of the season last year. But now, with this victory, with a, such a tight battle here today, it looks like it's going to be one hell of a championship to look forward to. We'd be in Mitchell's town for round two. Hope you'll join us then. In association.